Africa. It is noon in Zurich. It's 1 p.m. in Damascus. I'm Onita Rajpal. And I'm Zane Verge. This is World One Live from London. But first, allegations of kickbacks and cover-ups, which go right to the top of the so-called beautiful game. Sepp Blatter, head of world football's governing body, FIFA, is under intense pressure to provide answers. A day after a Swiss court published damning documents which implicate his predecessor in a multi-million dollar corruption scandal. The question now is how much Blatter knew about the allegations and when. Court papers show bribes were allegedly paid to former president Jao Avalange at a time when Blatter was serving under him. The racism trial of England's soccer star John Terry is moving into its final stages. The court here in London is hearing closing arguments today. It is after three days of evidence from some of the sport's biggest names. Chances outside court uh, in West here in London uh, for more on that. We understand that today's closing arguments. Uh, when could we expect to hear a verdict? Uh, the kind of testimony that we've been hearing, or that has been printed, I should say, uh, has been pretty colorful, to say the least. Uh, give us an idea, and I think we cannot ever uh, uh, state it too much, in terms of what kind of uh, impact this could have on John Terry, no matter what the finding will be. Um, well, it could potentially have a, a serious impact. I think it's probably already Welcome done. Welcome back. Less than a week after Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's inner circle first began to crack, now a top-ranking diplomat has broken rank and abandoned the Syrian government. The Syrian ambassador to Iraq is the first senior diplomat to defect from the regime in 16 months of brutality. In a video Nawa posted on, a Facebook, on Facebook, Nawa al-Faraz appears to call on the military to join the revolution to to remove what he calls the gang that has been in place for decades, the same government with which he has only just cut his ties. Now, while the Syrian regime counts his, its losses, President al-Assad can still count on Russia. The UN Security Council is paralyzed over its next move, mainly because Russia is blocking any resolution that threatens the Syrian government with sanctions. This report now comes from CNN senior United Nations correspondent Richard Roth. In his latest video teleconference with the UN Security Council, UN Arab League envoy Kofi Annan appealed for help. Let's for take a look at what newspapers are saying about this, starting in the United Arab Emirates and uh, this headline in Gulf News, Syria crisis kicks up Cold War dust. It's an editorial that says as long as Washington and Moscow fail to agree to bring the civil war to a stop, Syria is condemned to wallow in more or less permanent misery. Also in the UAE, the Nationals headline is this, what Russia wants to hear about Syria. And this is a comment piece that says, the problem here is that the Syrian opposition leaders have so few followers that they can offer no plausible guarantees about the shape of a successor state. And finally, here in Britain, the Guardian's headline is Assad's isolation is growing. It's an analysis piece that says the ambassador's defection realizes the highest hopes of the Syrian opposition that the defection of the Tlas family would embolden other members of the Sunni elite to break with the regime. Of course, Saturday, there have been no new cases of the illness that has killed more than 60 children in Cambodia. And while doctors now know what caused so many of these children to fall ill and die, they are still in the dark as to how to cure them should more fall ill. CNN's chief medical correspondent Sanjay Gupta looks at the race to save lives. The only thing doctors knew for sure was when the children arrived at the hospital, they were dying. Welcome back. You're watching World One Live from London. Lots happening in the world of sport. We've been talking a lot about the allegations of uh, kickbacks and corruptions at uh, football's world governing body. Amanda Davis joins us now. Uh, and it seems as though that uh, there's an ugly side to this beautiful game. Yeah, I, I wish I could bring you some good news uh, about football, but sadly there's a couple of uh, corruption stories around. Mm, you've mentioned more. you've mentioned the one about FIFA earlier on, and now we're going to talk about one that was uh, involved in the Premier League mm. uh, a few years back. And uh, and sadly, it really is a theme in sports news today. The former Southampton players, including uh, former captain Francis Benali and Matt Letizia, have been reacting angrily to initiative and spearheaded the race. That's the reason for my victory. Incredible story there. I'm not sure which is more of a challenge, running two hours extra after your original training session or eating 50 pieces of sushi in one sitting. I'd prefer the latter. <laughs> Do you do you think I you think, could manage it? No, but I'd prefer it. But yeah, uh, yeah I Less suppose. Less exertion, I think. Somewhat more enjoyable, <laughs> possibly. Exactly. Thank you very much. See ya.
What's wrong with you? I can manage 50 pieces of sushi. Easily. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you can manage running. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching World One live from London. Comic the book fans by the thousands are in sunny San Diego for the annual Comic Con Festival. And Hollywood has taken note of the rise of the comic book heroes. CNN's Neil Curry takes a look at the recent influx of comic book characters to the big screen and their growing popularity around the world. Ever since Christopher Reeve stepped into his spandex as Superman in 1978, Hollywood has looked to the comic book superhero. <laughs> keep on looking, keep on looking. <laughs> well, uh, keeping our eyes on the skies, Mario Ramos is here with the world with, at the World Weather Center with more on her outlook and what she has found. <laughs> you know what? I, I wanted to share these pictures with you guys, Monita, because I was reading this really interesting article from uh, NASA. And it's not a new article, it just really caught my eye because of this picture right here. Let me go ahead and show you. This uh, right here behind me, Monita, is a picture of the Milky Way. And this is right outside Abu Dhabi. Lewis took this picture and he says that guy. He had a heart Monita, thing. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much for that, sure. Murray. Before we go, we just want to say happy anniversary to Mick and the Boys from the Rolling Stones. Yeah, the legendary rock band played their first gig in London 50 years ago today. The fresh-faced lads played at the Marquee Club on the 12th of July, half a century ago, under the name the Rolling Stones. The G came later. I'm Zane Virgie. The E was always there. <laughs> and I'm Anita Rajpal. Stay tuned here on CNN.